What's going on there, YouTube, and welcome back to another comic book video. All right, so we're going to continue our coverage over X-Men comics as we work our way up to the Fall of the Mutant storyline. Now, the next book we have to cover is Fantastic Four vs. X-Men. Now, when it comes to this crossover, it's really interesting because this was the first step of Chris Claremont removing Kitty Pride from the X-Men. Let me explain. So, when it came to the fall of the mutants era of X-Men comics, Chris Claremont felt like it was about time to get rid of some old characters to bring in some new characters. And matter of fact, when it came to the X-Men at this point, they already gained three new members, Dazzler, Psylocke, and Longshot. Now, when it comes to Kitty Pride, yes, she will no longer be part of the X-Men, but should be able to join a brand new team coming down the road, better known as Excalibur. And so this was just a building block to get to that point right there to introduce another X-Men book. Now, with that being said, remember, when it came to Kitty Pride, she got seriously injured to the point where she is unable to turn off her phasing ability. Now, that's a huge problem, and the reason why, because sooner or later, she is going to completely disappear. Her molecules are breaking apart, and so the X-Men must find a way to save her by turning off her phasing ability before she no longer exists. And so getting into today's video, we do pick up with Franklin Richards having a nightmare. Now, when it comes to Franklin in this nightmare, he sees his father, Reed Richards, being the reason why both the X-Men and the Fantastic Four are both dead. Now, we're not told how they died, but apparently Reed is responsible. And apparently he knew a day like this would come. Now, here's the thing. Because you have Franklin try his best to stop his father from doing something that could technically turn him completely evil. But to Reed, he tells Franklin, no son, you cannot stop me. Nobody can stop me. Like I said, I knew this day would have come sooner or later. And so you have Reed pick up a book. Now this book is actually his old college journal. But apparently Reed ever since then knew a day like this would come. Now, as soon as Reed picks up the book and he opens it, a beam of light shoots out of it and begins the process of turning Reed into Dr. Doom to say that down the road, possibly, Reed is going to be the reason why the X-Men and the Fantastic Four die. And if that does happen, there's a possibility that Reed might become the next Dr. Doom. Now, like I said though, that was a dream. So you do have Franklin wake up, but he wakes up scared and he wants to be comfort. And so he goes over to Reed. Now, like every almost classic Fantastic Four book, when it comes to Reed being in his lab, he somewhat, not really somewhat, he does ignore his family. And so you have Franklin coming to his father looking to be comfort, and you have Reed say, hey man, sorry, I'm busy, go find your mom. Matter of fact, I'll call her and tell her to take care of you. And so he does that. And so you have Susan take over for Reed. And you have Franklin tell Susan what he saw in that nightmare. Now for Susan, she's kind of like, dude, it's a nightmare, calm down. You know what? Everyone has weird dreams, don't worry, those dreams will not come to life. Except you have Susan going through some old boxes and she finds Reed Richards' old college journal. And as soon as she shows Franklin, he begins to freak out because in his dream, he saw that book be the reason why his father turned into Dr. Doom. 
Now, when it comes to the X-Men, well, they are currently at Mirror Island with Mora McTaggart and also Magneto as they try to find some kind of way to save the life of Kitty Pride. And so they're wondering what they can do before the possibility of Kitty no longer being around. But while you have the team just hanging out outside or inside trying to find different ways to save Kitty Pride, well, that is the moment where you have Magneto contact the entire team because apparently he got word that Reed Richards might have some kind of device that could really help out Kitty Pride. And so you have Magneto say, hey, I'm going to call up Reed Richards. Now for the X-Men, they're kind of concerned, will the Fantastic Four come? Because Magneto used to be a bad guy for a very long time in X-Men comics, only recently being turned into a good guy. And so to the rest of the world, they still look at him as a villain. And so the X-Men are very worried that Reed might say no because of Magneto. We then jump over to Dazzler and also Longshot because right now they're in the middle of the ocean trying to find a missing fisherman. And honestly, it does not take them that long to find him, except this missing fisherman is going to be very important for the next chapter of this story. But getting back over to the Fantastic Four, you have Reed wanting to spend some time with Susan. Except when he tries to, you know, be that good old husband, well, she turns around angry at him because she read his college journal. And what she read could possibly bring the end to the Fantastic Four. We then jump over to She-Hulk. Now remember, around this time, She-Hulk was part of the Fantastic Four. Honestly, I would say the Fantastic Five because you have Ben Grimm, you have the Human Torch, you have She-Hulk, you have Susan, you have Reed, like you have five people on a four person team. Either way, let's not forget, She-Hulk is a lawyer and currently she is working on something when it comes to Magneto. That right there is not really important because while she's working on that case, well, she is confronted by Ben Grimm. And you have the two characters have a conversation about how they feel about Magneto. When it comes to She-Hulk, she feels like everybody deserves a second chance. And when it comes to Magneto now being part of the X-Men, there's a good chance that he's actually good. Except for Ben Grimm, he believes that no bad guy will actually turn good. They always stay evil no matter what. And so for him, he says he can never trust Magneto at all, no matter what Magneto does to show that he is a good guy. Now, while you have the two characters talking to one another, they do hear a loud explosion and a building is falling apart. And so you have She-Hulk and Ben Grimm try to save the day. Now, you also have Magneto appear as well, alongside with the Human Torch. And you have all four characters work together to save this building. Now, here's the thing, because now with Ben Graham seeing Magneto in action, it's him kind of beginning the process of looking at Magneto in a better way. Either way, once you have our heroes be able to save the building, they do ask Magneto, why are you here? He says he needs to talk to Reed Richards. And so we do see our heroes go back over to the Baxter building. Now, when they do arrive, you do have Magneto asking Reed for his help to hopefully use his new device to save the life of Kitty Pride. Now, here's the thing. Reed, he does say yes but he does look depressed. And the reason why? Because he's currently arguing with his wife, Susan, about what she had read in that journal. But here's the thing, because whatever happened in that journal begins the process of putting doubt in the mind of Reed Richards. And that's not normal, because when it comes to science, Reed is very confident about almost anything in science. 
but now he's beginning to have doubts about his invention being able to help out Kitty Pride. And so even though he does say yes, he's kind of like, it's going to fail possibly. Now, Susan does not go with the Fantastic Four because, well, she's upset with her husband, but somebody got to take care of Franklin. Now, on their way over to Mir Island, you have the other members of the Fantastic Four realize there's something wrong with Reed. But the question is, what? And so you have Ben ask Reed, hey dude, are you okay? Now, you have Reed tell Ben, yeah, not really, because I'm having doubt that my device can actually help out Kitty Pride to save her life. Now, you have Ben tell Reed, why are you having doubt? Like, dude, almost every single time when it comes to science, you are always right, except one time. And of course, that would be the cosmic rays. Now, as soon as Reed hears that, it kind of tells us that whatever was written in that journal that ticked off Susan had to be about the cosmic rays that gave our heroes their abilities, that made them the Fantastic Four. And so because of that, he's now having doubt right now if he is able to save the life of Kitty Pride. Either way, they do arrive to Mir Island. But right after they do arrive to Mir Island, you have Reed tell everyone there that he is sorry. And they're kind of like, sorry about what? And Reed says, I cannot help you. I cannot do this. My device is not going to work. Sorry for wasting your time. Now, when it comes to the X-Men, they get very upset because they're wondering, then what's the point of you being here? You came all the way out here with your device to help us, and now you're telling us you can't? Now, Reed does not tell our heroes why he cannot help them. It's just him saying, no, I cannot do it because he feels like his device might actually kill off. Kitty Pride. Either way, you have the X-Men get very ticked off, especially Wolverine, who wants some answers, who begins the battle between the two teams. And so as we dive into the second chapter, well, we pick up with Wolverine attacking Reed. We are now getting Fantastic Four versus the X-Men. Now, here's the thing though, guys, because all of this could have had been avoided if Wolverine had just sat down and tried to talk to Reed and figure out why Reed no longer wants to help out the X-Men instead of trying to attack Reed. And so with Wolverine attacking Reed, well, Ben Grimm, the Human Torch, and also She-Hulk, they're kind of like, hey, you can attack our man like that. Now we have to jump you. And so while you have those people trying to jump Wolverine, you have the rest of the X-Men want to fight against the Fantastic Four as well as a way to protect Wolverine. And so it's kind of like, oh my God, Wolverine, this is all your fault. This whole fight is all your fault because you could not sit down and actually talk to people. Now, as the fighting goes on, Storm, she does get burned by the Human Torch. And that burn is somewhat important for this story arc. You also have Rogue being able to use her abilities to absorb the powers of Ben Grimm. And so now Rogue is technically a she-thing. But either way, Psylocke arrives and she realizes all of this mess is because of Wolverine being a hothead. Now, there is something I want to talk about, and that would be Franklin Richards. See, around his time, he had the ability to project himself in other locations as long as he was asleep. It was kind of like a psychic projection. Either way, when he does that, he is able to kind of be there, but no one else noticed that he is actually there. And so while you had the X-Men and the Fantastic Four fighting against one another, he had once again project himself over to the island to only see the two teams fighting against each other. And that scared him. And the reason why? Because of his first dream, the idea of his father turning evil. And he feels like that battle right there is the first step of his first dream 
actually happening. And so when he wakes up and he cries out for his mom, you do have Susan doing a great job trying to comfort her son. But when he tells her everything he saw on Muir Island, thanks to his, again, psychic projection well she's kind of like this is all Reed's fault because now it seems like one our child is having a hard time but two what she had read in that journal could lead to the end of the fantastic four now we have to jump over to Longshot, dazzler and also havoc because they're also on mere island but they're inside the actual lab because remember Earlier, Dazzler and Longshot went out of their way to find a missing fisherman. And so they're trying to see if he is going to survive. Except you have Havoc tell them, hey, the rest of the team right now is fighting against the Fantastic Four. What in the world is going on? We have to go help out our team. And so they leave. But as soon as they leave, the man they saved earlier wakes up. Except we kind of find out it's not a man, it's some kind of machine. And he's all like, okay, it's now time for me to begin my plan. But getting back outside, you do have more Metagger and also Storm being able to calm both sides down. They kind of say, Wolverine, this is all your fault. The reason why both teams are fighting against each other because you're being a hothead. Now, once both sides do calm down, you have Storm ask Reed once again, please, can you help us out? Can you save Kitty Pryde's life? And he says no, because again, he's now beginning to doubt himself as a scientist. Now, right after he says that, you then have that robot man comes out and that robot man begin to change into some kind of projector because this robot belongs to Dr. Doom. And so with the robot now being a projector, it begins to project Dr. Doom, allowing him to have a conversation with the Fantastic Four and the X-Men. Now, when it comes to Dr. Doom, he says, listen, I just got word that you guys need someone to help you out with your Kitty Pride problem. What if I tell you guys I have a machine that's very similar to Reed Richards' machine? What if my machine can actually help her? Now for our heroes, they are quick to say yes. We will go to you for help. Now, when it comes to the Fantastic Four, they tell the X-Men, hey guys, don't do that. Because even if he does help you out, you are going to be in his debt. And I'm telling you right now, you are going to hate working for that man or working with that man. But for our heroes, the X-Men, they don't care because again, Kitty Pride is on the verge of actually dying. And so right now, they're down to do almost anything to save her life. And so even though you have Reed just saying over and over again, the X-Men are not listening. And matter of fact, you have more of Tiger tell Reed, this is my island and you failed us. So go ahead and go right now. And you have Reed and the Fantastic Four having no choice but to go ahead and leave and watch the X-Men accept Doctor Doom's offer. And so we do jump back over to the Fantastic Four at the Baxter building. Now, this is them having a family meeting. And this meeting is not really a good one. And the reason why, because when it comes to the rest of the team, they have now all read what was in the journal of Reed Richards. And we kind of find out it has to deal with the idea of their origin. Let me explain. So when Stan Lee wrote the Fantastic Four, our heroes were going to travel in space. And he told his team, my rocket should protect us from the cosmic rays. We already know that was actually incorrect. They were hit by the cosmic rays and they became the Fantastic Four. Well, and this what could be a retcon, Reed knew the entire time what was going to happen to him and his team. And matter of fact, he intended for him and his team to get hit with the cosmic rays. And here's the reason why. Because Reed did a lot of studying over human evolution. He wanted to know what would come next for the human 
race. Now, he did read over a lot of papers that were written by Charles Xavier that basically stated the next step was going to be mutants. And that was a huge thing for Reed. He wanted to prove that was not going to be the only next step of evolution for the human race. There could be many different ways that humans may evolve. And that is where cosmic rays got involved. He wanted to prove that cosmic rays could possibly help humans evolve as well. And so when it came to Stan Lee's origin for the Fantastic Four, it's now saying, no, that is wrong. Instead, Reed knew what would happen. He intended for him and the rest of his team to gain powers, to use them as proof as there is another way for humans to evolve. And this is a huge retcon, except you have Reed trying to state that he didn't write this. If he did, he does not remember. But the rest of the team, they don't believe him. They're kind of like, nah, man, you knew. You hid that secret from us, and that's messed up. And so it does seem like to be the end of the Fantastic Four. And so as we dive into the third chapter, we do pick up with the X-Men now in Latveria. Now, while being there, you do have Dr. Doom trying to help out Kitty Pride, but first, he must help out Storm. And the reason why? Because Dr. Doom has a huge crush on her. When it comes to Dr. Doom, he has a lot of respect for Storm, to the point where he has been trying to get with her for a very long time. Matter of fact, in one of her first appearances in X-Men comics, the X-Men came over to Latveria, and even then, Storm was all like, hmm, Dr. Doom seems to like me. And he was kind of like, yo, I really do like her, and I want her by my side. And so currently, you have him just trying to fix up her burn wound that she had received from the Human Torch in the last chapter. But we have to shift our focus over to Kitty Pride because remember, this entire storyline is about Doctor Doom trying to help her and turn off her phasing ability. Either way, when it comes to Kitty Pride, she's at the point where she wants to commit suicide. She wants to go ahead and let her powers take her away. And the reason why? So the X-Men will not be in Dr. Doom's debt. And so she does begin the process of trying to kill herself off. Now, Franklin Richards is also there as well. Because remember, every single time he falls asleep, he is able to psychic project himself somewhere else in the world. And once again, he's doing it right next to Kitty Pride. But remember, nobody can usually see him. Only he can see the people around him in his projection form. And so he does see Kitty Pride about to commit suicide. And he tries his best to stop her to the point where he does wake up her pet dragon, which then warns the rest of the X-Men what she is trying to do. Now you have Psylocke try to communicate with Kitty Pride with their minds, saying, hey, listen, don't do this. We're okay with Dr. Doom helping you. He can help you. He can save your life. Please don't kill yourself. But again, she does not want the X-Men to be in Dr. Doom's debt. Now, while she's about to commit suicide, Flake Franklin, almost said Flaken, Franklin Richards is able to yell out loud to the point where now other people can see his projection. And so he cries out to her to say, hey, please don't do this. Please stop. Like the X-Men are going to win. You're going to be healed. The Fantastic Four is not going to end. It's him crying and hoping that everything works out for both teams. And Kitty Pryde seeing him cry made her realize that it's most likely not a good idea to commit suicide in front of him, but at the same time, she kind of got hope thanks to Franklin because 
Franklin does believe that everything is going to work out. We do jump back over to the Baxter building and the reason why because we pick up with Reed Richards telling Gus that he does not believe what he has saw in his journal. Like yes, it is basically written in a way that he usually writes but he does not remember writing that and so he's now beginning to have doubt about his own memory he feels like maybe he did write this maybe he did plan to make the fantastic four and when the rays hit him he had possibly forgotten it's him kind of wondering what is real and what is not real now he want to sit down and talk to his wife but he can't he feels like he broken her heart because again he changed her life as well without her permission. And so instead, he goes to check in on his son, who is currently going through something at the moment with the whole idea of him just seeing Kitty Pride about to commit suicide. And so you have Reed being there for his son and being able to have a great father and son moment. And while you have the two characters having this moment, Susan sees the two hanging out, and that is when she realized, okay, I don't believe that Reed wrote that in his journal many years ago. Somebody else did, but the question is right now, who? But we jump over to Ben Grimm, who is currently moping around the city. Now, when it comes to Ben Grimm, the reason why is because he feels like his best friend purposely turned him into the thing and so for Ben Grimm he feels betrayed but also the idea that he has no one to love now for the hardcore fans out there when it comes to the Fantastic Four let's not forget around this time Alicia Masters was not dating Ben Grimm she was dating the Human Torch and so homeboy has no one to love and he feels like he is a monster. Now, the only reason he's able to overcome these feelings is when he goes out of his way to save a young girl in a very bad car accident. And once he's able to save her, and you have the mom and the daughter show a lot of love towards him, he realized that even though he may look like a monster, the people don't look at him like that. They look at him as a hero. And so he is able to continue on. Now, the ending of the third chapter is really more the idea of the Fantastic Four coming back together as a team. You had every single member realize why they are part of this team, but also you have Reed Richards still having doubt about his device that could have been used to help out Kitty Pride because he feels like there's some errors when it came to his design. But he's now hoping that Doctor Doom will be able to overcome the errors that he had made to hopefully save Kitty Pride. But at least on the bright side, the Fantastic Four came back together. They all have forgiven Reed, but they all believe that Reed did not actually write that journal that somebody else did. But again, the question is who? Now, when we jump into the fourth chapter, we do pick up with Kitty Pride. Now, is Kitty Pride just patiently waiting for Dr. Doom to do something that could possibly save her life? Now, that is the moment where she is confronted by Franklin Richards. And again, this is just him psychically projecting himself into the area. Now, when it comes to Franklin, he does tell Kitty Pride the Fantastic Four are on their way to help her out, that his father may have found a way to actually save her life. Now, when it comes to Franklin, he also mentions the idea of his nightmare at the very beginning of this story. Because remember, he believed the book that was found was going to lead into his father possibly turning into some kind of evil version of himself or become just as evil as Dr. Doom. And because the book has been found, it's Franklin saying, I'm very worried about the idea of my father turning evil or possibly Dr. Doom winning. Either way, you have Kitty Pride and Franklin being able to kind of talk to each other to comfort each other because they're both going through different kinds of things. 
Now we do jump over to the Fantastic Four, who are right now using their jet to head over to Latveria. Now on their way there, you do have the Human Torch explain the origin of Reed Richards and Doctor Doom. Not completely, but to kind of give us the details of why Doctor Doom hates Reed so much. And we kind of find out that these two characters used to attend the same college, except as soon as Reed had met Victor, they became rivals in different kinds of ways. Now for Reed, I won't say really he looked at Victor as a rival, it was more that he kind of respected Doom because how smart Doctor Doom was, and matter of fact wanted to be his friend. But for Victor, it was more of no, I don't like you. I don't like the idea of someone being as smart as me. And so again, the two became rivals. Now there was a project that Dr. Doom was working on and Reed tried to tell Doom that he had made a few mistakes. But because Doom believed that he was smarter than Reed, he ignored what Reed said. But unfortunately, Reed was right, and so Doom experiment fell apart. And so ever since that day, Doctor Doom had a bunch of bunch of hatred towards Reed Richards. We did jump over to Magneto and Storm. Now, this is the moment where you have the book kind of give us a quick reminder of something very important about Magneto. Because remember, around this time in Marvel Comics, he was the father to Scarlet Witch, Quicksilver and also Polaris, but around his time you have Magneto beginning to hint at the idea there was a fourth child who came before all three of them, except that child died. There was a fire at his home and unfortunately his powers were way weaker back then and so he was only able to save himself and his wife but unfortunately not his daughter Anya. And so she died in that burning building. And so ever since then, it really did bother Magneto a lot. Now, before he's able to explain more about his daughter, well, you have Dr. Doom project in front of him saying, listen, man, you are out here using your magnetic powers and that's ruining my whole entire experiment that could possibly save Kitty Pryde's life. So please, stop using your powers until I am able to save your student's life. Now before we are able to move on, well that is the moment where you have the Fantastic Four appear. Now remember, the Fantastic Four is only here to help out the X-Men to see if Reed is able to actually fix the machine that he was trying to use originally to hopefully save Kitty Pryde's life. But the problem is though, the X-Men, they're on edge because the last time they saw the Fantastic Four, well, it was a battle. But on top of that, Reed let them down. And so you have the X-Men wondering why in the world are the Fantastic Four here for? Now, once again, it's thanks to certain members of the X-Men, Rogue and Wolverine, where it does lead into another battle. Because at first, when you do have the Fantastic Four land, you have Reed try to talk to Magneto about the idea of having another attempt at saving the life of Kitty Pride. But because Wolverine and Rogue are both hot-headed people, well, they begin to attack the Fantastic Four, who did try to defend themselves. Now, this fight does go on for a few pages until you have Franklin Richard stop everybody to say, guys, look at y'all. You are fighting each other, and right now, Kitty Pryde needs all of us to make it through. So please, Put your differences to the side and try to help one another to save her life. And so this leads into the moment where you have Reed explain what was wrong with his device and most likely was wrong with also Dr. Doom's device. And we kind of find out that their devices are not made in a way to actually help Kitty Pride out it could possibly make things worse for her. Because remember, right now, her molecules are breaking apart to the point where she might disappear completely. And so when it comes to their devices, well, it might actually make things a whole lot worse, speed up the process. And so is Reed saying, dude, I realize what is wrong with your device because again, 
is similar to mine, except Reed cannot really explain what is actually wrong. He's having a hard time trying to figure it out. Now, this is what Dr. Dew wanted. And what I mean by that is, it technically tells us right here, it was Dr. Dew who wrote that in Reed's journal, just in case for a time like this, where Reed will have doubt himself about how smart he truly is. And so right now, even though Reed realized what is wrong with Dr. Doom's advice, Reed cannot fix it though. And so it's Dr. Doom saying, you know what Reed, go ahead and ask me or we can have Psylocke probe your mind to get the answers we all need. And so for Reed, he hates the idea that it comes down to this moment right here. To reverse the effects of their machine on Kitty Pride, he might have to ask the help of Dr. Doom. But at the same time, he does not want to do that. He does not want to give Dr. Doom something that he may love. And so we see the X-Men freaking out because Kitty Pride is getting worse at a faster rate. You have everybody staring down Reed. You have Reed panicking and you have Dr. Doom just looking at Reed like, yes, I finally won. Except at the end of the book, a few hours later, we come to find out they were able to reverse the effects of their machine. And now they have begun the proper healing process for Kitty Pride, Meaning that sooner or later, she should be able to go back to normal. Just like that. Literally, just like that. Now, you have Susan confront Dr. Doom. And the reason why, because she was able to realize that it was Dr. Doom who wrote in Reed's journal many years ago as a way to set up a moment like this. So Dr. Doom has been waiting for a moment like this for a very long time. And of course, it finally came. Now, the book really ends on that note right there. Kitty Pride is now in the process of being healed and most likely being a member of the X-Men are technically on her way out to join a new team. But with that being said, this is where we are going to end today's comic book video. So please leave me a like down below and subscribe. But guys, see y'all next time. Later.